This is the Farms.com Corn Report, sponsored by Mazex Seeds. Mazex Seeds, technology you want, yield you can count on. Great, so now we're in the field. We're gonna give you some tips on how to evaluate the corn plant population and then evaluate missing plants or plants that, that uh, are struggling. So I've got my tape measure laid down. This field is planted in 30 inch corn rows. So we've measured off 17 feet, five inches, which is one one thousandth of an acre. And I've laid it down between two rows. Behind me, I have my population chain, which is just another uh, method of counting the plot population at 17 foot, five inches. So now I have, I've done my counts, I've got 23,000 plant population in one row and 27 in the other. I know this farmer from the uh, communication that he's dropped uh, a strong 30,000, 31,000. So we're obviously we've got some issues here in this field because one row, uh, there is some residue in the, in the rows, but we've got 23,000 in one row, 27 to 28 in the other. So I believe it's very important to do a thorough job in a cornfield of, of taking plant populations and my summary here kind of demonstrates that. I've done 10 population counts in this field. We might get a false sense of confidence when we get a couple of 30s, but because I, I took number 9 and 10, we hit a 23,000 plant population. So after we've done our 10 uh, counts throughout the field, we can average that out. Uh, whether you document this on your smartphone or, or carry a pad around, uh, then we've done the mass, we're averaging 27 to 28,000. I know this farmer was shooting for a strong 30, 31, so he's going to be a little disappointed. We can see his planter is operating actually fairly well. We've only got a couple of doubles, so there's no issue with the plant planter setup. That's good to know because they may have made some adjustments to the corn planter in the winter. So this information tells us that our corn planter is working well. We have some skips, which is an issue that we'll have to deal with. But overall, we've got a very consistent, uh, we only had a couple of plants that were V1 or the two leaf. Majority of the plants were two leaf or three leaf over, sorry, V2. Um, what that tells them is the planter's probably setting at a very even seeding depth. We got most of those plants that are up at the same leaf stage. So overall, I think the planter performance, uh, this demonstrates that your planter performance in this field uh, was excellent. So we found a, a seed that's, uh, although the corn has emerged, it's very unthrifty. The rest of the corn is at a, a, a V2 or a three leaf over stage. This one is struggling to get through the ground. This will really be a weed and will take away from final plant population. So I'll just, I'll just pull him out. Looks to have a normal uh, radical or primary root. We have a little bit of swelling, so he may have grown through some herbicide, but we did, uh, knowing the growing conditions in this field, it was dry and cold, so this plant obviously uh, struggled to get through. So there's a plant that uh, is not going to make it into final yield. Here's another plant in communication with this farmer. We know uh, he was out early evaluating the plant stand and he found some missing plants. And when he dug them up, he found the seed actually had germinated. So this seed germinated, stuck out its radical root or its first root, but there was no coleoptile. So there's no shoot that was growing towards the, uh, the surface of the soil. So in communication with his seed company, he found out that actually this was a, a, a hybrid or a lot that had a, even though the warm germination was good, it had a, a slightly off cold germination. So we know that under the stress conditions of this field, the cold dry conditions early in, in May, that this seed actually just didn't, uh, even though it germinated, uh, it's, uh, it's not even gonna be a weed. It's not gonna hit the, the there will be no shoot that hits the, uh, hits the surface of the soil. The other thing that you can monitor, this grower uses a lot of uh, conservation tillage. This field actually is, was stripped after winter wheat last year. So they put strips in in the late fall and then plant it right into those strips this spring. So we have a tremendous earthworm population in this field and earthworms will actually grab, uh, grab corn leaves and pull them down in their earthworm holes. So this corn plant was bent over. I knew it was, was emerged fine, but this leaf was pulled down into an earthworm hole. It'll survive. You can see the new leaves are, uh, something else was chewing on it. But uh, with the warm weather and the moisture we've got now, this corn plant will continue to grow. But it's interesting to get out in fields and look at that. It's, that's a benefit of having a high earthworm population is it's gonna pull on some corn plants. But uh, you can see this plant has a very good root system. So it's with the moisture and the, uh, 
the temperatures we're going to see over the next week that uh, corn plant the growing point is still below and it'll uh, it'll keep on keep on going so I'm not worried about that plant so we have some feeding at the tip so, so the leaf that was pulled down by the earthworms was this leaf it was actually the sand leaf or the coleoptile leaf uh, these leaves are were clipped off it almost looks like a cutworm or something chewed the as a coleoptile was coming through the soil these would have been rolled up and some insect probably a cutworm because we have reduced tillage here there's there could be a higher probability of cutworms and something has chewed off those two leaves straight across but again it, the plant will continue to grow i'm not i'm not worried about that plant so this is an example of a healthy plant and it, it indicates uh, what the corn plant has gone through through the growing season you can see all the wheat residue from last year there's actually a nice earthworm there's actually two nice earthworm holes there so we've got lots of earthworm activity which is going to give us good uh, uh, water movement up and down through the soil because we got lots of macropores. We've also had a couple of frosts in this area so you can see even though this is the healthiest corn plant uh, that's the coleoptile leaf so it actually would be a V2 not quite a V3 plant and it's got three leaves rolled over so we would call that a V2 or a V3 or a three leaf corn plant but uh, there's a slight discoloration on the coleoptile leaf and the first full leaf that's from the frost so this corn has struggled uh, it got out of the ground and got up to a couple leaves really quickly and then we had some frost which slowed it down but now we've had rain in the last uh, week we've had over three inches of rain in this area uh, so the new leaves are fine there's a little bit of uh, cold injury on that third leaf but uh, this corn will rock and roll now we've got heat and moisture I'm not worried this is one of the uh, the disadvantages of planting early uh, is your corn is going to go through some of that early season stress but if you look at the root system we've got a beautiful root system here uh, this plant is going to rock and roll we're going to have a we've got nice white roots growing here this plant is going to take off with the moisture we now have and the heat we're going to get in the next couple weeks this plant's going to be five to six leaf in no time so at this time of the year when we're trying to evaluate early corn growth there's some insect pests that we need to be aware of uh, we've already mentioned a little bit about cutworm in a reduced tillage situation you're going to have some cutworm uh, activity that will stay cool underneath the residue and then move over and feed on the corn plants if it's a corn following a forage crop like alfalfa there's potential to have uh, wireworm uh, and then of course we have uh, if it's corn following corn you have seed corn maggot so there's there's different insect pests those are probably the three main ones uh, the cutworm seed corn maggot and, and wireworms which can feed on either the seed or that early corn shoot and do a lot of damage this has been the Farms.com Corn Report, sponsored by Mazex Seeds. Mazex Seeds, great seed, great people. Harvest the difference with Mazex.